Good evening. I'm Laureen Garraud. I'm director of the TV division at Read Me Them. Welcome to MIPCOM and welcome to tonight's world premiere screening. We're, oh, We're very honored tonight to be presenting an exceptional series, Britannia, a Sky original production presented by Sky Vision. It's the first co-production between Sky and Amazon US. Britannia is set in Britain in the year 43. The land is ruled by battling warrior queens and mystical druids. But when the Roman army invades, these rivals reluctantly join forces to fight them off. Britannia is full of action, it is beautiful to look at, and the title, the title track is by the famous legend, music legend Donovan, who we're so delighted and honored to have with us in the audience tonight. Welcome, Donovan. No doubt, Britannia is going to become the next great TV obsession. It is produced by Vertigo Films in association with Neal Street Productions. After viewing the first episode, there will be a Q&A session led by World Screen's editorial group director, Anna Karugadi Gies, and she will be interviewing cast members, David Morrissey, Nikolai Lee Kass, and Eleanor Worthington Cox. And now it's a huge pleasure to introduce Sky's Head of Drama Commissioning, Anne Mensa. Well, there's loads of you. Good grief. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for coming to this very special premiere of Sky Atlantic's new series, Britannia. Britannia represents everything we stand for at Sky Drama. And that isn't just because it meant that we could get the incomparable Donovan to DJ later tonight. Amazingly passionate and inspirational talent, giving them the freedom to bring their voices and therefore their best work to Sky is what I think we stand for. And there is nothing, genuinely nothing, like witnessing talent in action when you watch Jez and Tom Bottomworth do their thing. I actually believe that they think differently to other humans. Um, they're extraordinary. And we're so proud that the result of this approach is consistently record-breaking audiences for our Sky Atlantic original dramas, such as Tin Star and Riviera, and the honor of being chosen by the team at Reed Meadham for the world premiere screening, Two Markets Running. In a crowded drama landscape, I believe that the only thing that stands out is the unique authored voice. That means being brave with our choices and backing talent wholeheartedly. And I hope that the talent we work with think we do that. We love the results, we love Britannia, and we hope you will too. A huge thank you to our co-producer, Morgan Mondell, and his amazing team at Amazon, as well as our international distributor, Sky Vision. And of course, to Jez, Tom, James, Pippa, Nick, David, Nikolai, Kelly, Eleanor, and the entire cast and crew of Britannia. We truly value what you've achieved in bringing the world of Britannia to life. Thanks again for coming tonight, and I hope you enjoy the show. Please stay with us for one more, for a few more moments. We have a great treat in store for you. We're actually going to have members of the cast and the executive producers join us for a quick conversation about what you just saw. My name's Anna Karugati. I'm the group editorial director of World Screen, and please join me in welcoming David Morrissey. Eleanor Worthington Cox, Nikolai Lee Kass, and James Richardson, who's executive producer. Please sit down. Thank you all for joining us. Wow. I think that's the first thing that we have to say. Wow. So all stories have a beginning. James, how did this first come about? How did the idea come? Um, it, it, it originally came about um, from, a, from an idea I had, um, uh, which was to do a film about the Bodicea story, which was, it was this kind of warrior, British warrior queen. But when I was doing the research on it, I was kind of thinking that actually um, I was less interested in the kind of story about this person who essentially uh, died at the end um, and wanted to really discover 
all the stuff about Stonehenge, um, Avebury, the Druids, all that kind of thing. It just, it just seemed like a world that we hadn't seen before, the idea of British myth. And it, uh, it was kind of at the same time that I'd seen a, um, a play that Jez Butterworth had written called um, Jerusalem, um, which was, and is, I think, for any of us who have seen it, one of the greatest modern plays um, that any of us have seen. And um, he, I talked to him about it and I said, you know, just, you know, well, where did this all come from? And he gave me this book called Myth by Karen Armstrong. And he, and he, he would just said, it's, it's that, that's what I'm interested in, the kind of the idea of myth creation, of where do stories come from? And um, I thought, let's try and explore that, the idea of where, does a, where, do, where do these stories come from? And what have we lost in our culture specifically um, from the Roman invasion. What happened when the Romans turned up and Christianity soon after that changed completely um, how we all thought, lived, um, treated men, women, um, and then spoke to Jez about it and he went, uh, I know what to do here, uh, leave it to me, <laughs> and he did. Fabulous, absolutely. Nikolai, how did you prepare for the role? And maybe for members of the audience who may not be familiar with who the Druids were, just a word about what their role was in it. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how to prepare for this. Um, uh, first off, I had to, there was language barrier. I'm from Denmark. So I had to prepare my, my, my language uh, much more than the others to start with. And But uh, the whole thing about the the, the, the the Druids and all that was, it's impossible for me to, to really, um, to, to say exactly what this was all about. We, we talked a lot about the drugs that was going on, the mushroom kind of realm that went through uh, um, Davis's world and how he was in contact with the, the, the other side yeah. and how he is communicating with that side all the time. And I, well, I, we, I, we just had to, to to do it as we, we, we went on, I think. That was really, we, we were rushing in the beginning and then we had to find out who we were while we were shooting, actually. Eleanor, how, what appealed to you about your character? I mean, she's an amazing young woman. How, what interested you about this role? Um, well, Kate, she's a, she's a very strong character and that, uh, that really appealed to me. Um, and I feel like I've never been able to show, um, obviously, a character developing um, throughout a series. And she really grows. Um, but yeah, she's a very brave, strong character, and that really appealed to me. Excellent. And was there special preparation to be a Roman general? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's a special preparation about the world. You have to know the world. Um, and I did quite a lot of research. You know, there's lots of books to read on that period. but. Really, I wanted to work with Jez. I mean, that was the bottom line. And I think Jez has this great sort of dichotomy, I think, which you see in the show, where he has a great regard for the period, but also a great irreverence for it as well. He makes it his own. And I think that's what's great about the piece and why I, I love it so much is the fact that it's, it's so modern in a way. And he brings that modern uh, take on to this world that we think we know so well. And he just messes it up. And I love that. And uh, yeah, I, I'm such a you know, great fan of the piece, actually. I love it. Right. Um, what was the vision? Well, I mean, Jez isn't here, but speak for him, please. I mean, it, it, this draws us right in. I mean, th what was his, was it his intent to like make us feel this experience as if we, as much as we could be a part of it, as opposed to just witnessing it from. Yeah, very, very much so. I mean, he wasn't, you know, Jez and Jez will will not slap me across the face for saying it. He he was less interested in the history. It's like, you know, this isn't a historical piece. Right. This is a show that's set up, you know, the Roman invasion of Britain was a moment in time. Um, what he wanted to explore is everything else change, like what happened when a moment like that kind of affected, how did it affect people, how did it affect people individually, how did it affect people as a nation, how did it affect people as tribes. Um, and he was interested in the kind of, in the mythic and the mystic, the kind of all of these things which we don't know anything about. We had a wonderful historical advisor who had done um, the HBO show in Rome, and he said to us right from the beginning, he said, look, we know about 
40% of what the Romans um, did. We know about 25% of what the Celts did. And we know nothing about the Druids. So he said, um, it's all yours. And for someone like Jez, who's one of the great storytellers in the English language, um, he just wanted to explore that and just say, right, let's get right in and see what we can experience and what we can feel. And, you know, Hurdy Gurdy Man in, in, in many ways kind of like epitomized it. The kind of essence of the show is in a track that, um, you know, Donovan made a, you know, a few decades ago. And it, can, it, it is the, it's the essence of, of what he was trying to do. I'm glad you mentioned that because we have Donathan, Donovan with us. Donovan, hello. Donovan, take a bow. Yes, I'm here. Donovan, how do you feel about having this song that is so well known uh, associated with Britannia? Well, it would take a movie, you know, a series like this to, to, to be called for a song like I have. And in the mid-60s, I come from a tradition of Irish and Scottish music. And uh, we've all heard of the term folk rock. But I felt that there was something a bit more pagan and a bit more deeper than just the folk rock. And so I put together and created something in the mid-60s called Celtic rock. And this meant that the drums would be more pagan, that the actual singing would be more like a chant. And I put it together. And in those early days of recording this song, I knew that it had to have powerful electric guitar, and nobody was thinking that way. And so the song has become quite iconic in its way, waiting for something as brash and as bold and as richly tapestried as this piece of work that I've just seen. And I'm very proud that the song has been called for in this new series called Britannia. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a, a couple more minutes. Um, talk, any of you, all of you, a little bit about the challenges, the physical challenges, what the weather did during the shoot. I mean, what, what were some of the difficulties and some of the surprises uh, of this shoot? <laughs> uh, I mean, the weather, we had all weather. I mean, we, we started in the summer and it was really, really hot. And then we ended in the winter, it was very, very cold. I mean, the challenges, I mean, what's wonderful watching it, of course, is you, when you're filming, you're in your world. You know, I was in my Roman world. So watching the other bits and seeing the different worlds is amazing to see uh, the other actors, the other storylines, the other characters coming out. And I was just blown away. I was blown away particularly by these two, really. Yeah. I mean, just think that central energy between the two of them going through and the wit and the sort of uh, repartee between the two of them is fantastic. So it was wonderful to see that. And I, do, and I think the production values you can see. But the characters are what's so great. I mean, I just love watching the characters and how it unfolds. That, for me, this evening was the really right. joy, the real joy. I love how there's humor interspersed here and there. Just, you know, these little zingers, like, you stink, you know? <laughs> he does, though. <laughs> he does. <laughs> A lot, a lot of that came actually from jazz. We, I remember we had a dinner. Uh, I had a dinner with jazz, and I, we just had a chat. I could feel at that time I didn't even know that he was the writer. I didn't read that memo. <laughs> so I was just sitting there talking with this 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 guy who got all my 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 bad humor and all my, my all my jokes, and he he kind of got it. And I go like, well, he's he's fun. And so he, so a month later, a new script came up with a, a lot of sarcasm. I thought that was great. So I'm really happy that we had that th talk. Right. That's great. And that was very much part of that. I think Jez would say that, you know, throughout the whole show, it needs to feel, it, he wanted to make it feel irreverent and funny. He wanted people to watch it and just have a great time. And um, it gets crazier and crazier and funnier and funnier as the, as the episodes go on. Eleanor, any moments in particular that stick out in your memory of this experience? Apart from me. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh, obviously. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I had never been able to do any stunts before, um, so that was kind of incredible, um, having that kind of freedom. Um, and I wasn't really able to see much, but obviously the set and like the, the room and camps and everything, like just glimpses of that. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
Where, where was it shot? What locations and how it was shot? It was shot in what? Wales and um, the Czech Republic. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm afraid we're, we've run out of time. I am sure that this will find incredible international appeal uh, between the cinematic values, uh, the characters, the universal themes. I think, thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.